Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Special Assignment. I'm your host, Ashraf Garda. In December last year, the Health Professions Council of South Africa found well-known cardiologist Dr. Vota Basson guilty of breaching medical ethics. This is for the activities that happened while he headed up the apartheid government's chemical and biological warfare program during the 1980s. Prior to this, shocking testimony emerged during the Truth and Reconciliation Commission about how the program was responsible for, among others, large-scale production of mandrax, cocaine, and tear gas, and providing disorientating substances for cross-border kidnappings. Some argue that his involvement resulted in many deaths, but Besson denied any wrongdoing and never applied for amnesty. In 2002, he was acquitted of all criminal charges against him before the High Court in Pretoria. Is this retribution or the final reckoning for the man dubbed Dr. Death? This documentary is produced by Rochelle Seaton Rogers. For nearly two decades, Bassons avoided persecution for his involvement in the apartheid government's secret chemical and biological warfare program. Have the chickens finally come home to roost for Dr. Basson? The breaches of medical ethics amounts to unprofessional conduct. Nothing inhumane was done. Nobody was injured, nobody got hurt, nobody was incapacitated in any way at all. The most frequent instruction we obtained from uh, Dr. Besson and Dr. Swanepoel was to develop something with which you could kill an individual. I'm saying let's decriminalize the conflict of the past. Stop prosecuting people. Twenty fourteen is the year in which South Africa celebrates twenty years of democracy. It is a young democracy born out of flowing tears and furious bloodshed. For many years, the black majority had to fight a violent oppression by a minority white rule during apartheid. Wounds in the South African psyche still fester as many of the perpetrators of human rights violations during apartheid walked free and were never punished. Dr. Vota Besson is considered as one such person by many. He earned the nickname Dr. Death after testimony emerged during the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and a criminal trial about how he had headed a secret chemical and biological warfare program named Project Coast during the 1980s. Scientists who worked with Dr. Besson testified that the aim of the project was to develop undetectable and untraceable deadly poisons to attack and kill black struggle leaders and suppress the black population. The most frequent instruction we obtained from uh, Dr. Besson and Dr. Swanepoel was to develop something with which you could kill an individual which would make his death resemble a natural death and that something was to be not detectable in a normal forensic laboratory. That was the chief aim of Ruler Plata Search Laboratories on the COVID side. I was approached to supply some, uh, if, if it would be possible, if there would be a possibility if we could supply some, some poison to eliminate an enemy of the state. Who, who um, requested you to do this? Voter, Basson, Dr. Basson. Dr. Janse van Rensburg testified that Reverend Frank Chikani was one of the high profile people which Dr. Basson's unit had attempted to kill with poison. Thank you. Can you see that? <coughs> he told me exactly what had happened, the mistakes they'd made, and he told me that General Fester was furious that the attempt to kill Frank Shikani had failed, and that he wouldn't, he'd ensure that it wouldn't fail next time. Janse van Rensburg also made other shocking revelations. You were shocked when you called this list. I'm talking about you as a person. There were also plans to contaminate medication used by President Nelson Mandela at Polismoor with the untraceable heavy metal poison thallium. Dr. Besson mentioned, after he had told us a lot about the effects of thallium, if you give just the right dose, you mustn't give too much, but just 
the right amount, then you can cause what appears to be an outbreak of uh, meningitis or encephalitis. And you get similar symptoms. And in so doing, he mentioned in passing that he had given some thallium. We said we had given some thallium to Steve Biko. The doctors also testified about bigger, sinister plans to target the black population. Oh, the other brief was, and very, very important one, was to develop a product to curtail the birth rate of the black population in the country. Could you tell us a little bit more about this? Who asked you to develop this product? The person that directly instructed us or asked us to do this was Dr. Besson. And it's said that Besson was getting his orders from the highest authority in the land. It's no doubt that, in my mind, <coughs> the uh, Prime Minister, P.W. Boot, or our President, uh, knew about the project and that the generals all the way down from the officer commanding were aware of it. It pained some of the scientists who came forward during the TRC that people at the top responsible for the orders denied it. It's in the language you are best comfortable with. I had nervous breakdowns on all of these issues and many things. We suffered from it scientists a lot, I can assure you, and I cannot make this good. But what grieves me is that the people that created this climate is now denying it. Like if you listen to a person like Minister Pak Bota, you would have sworn he was born an ANC member. He never said, total onslaught, communism, that's the enemy. Never. He denies it. And this is what grieves me, Mr. Chairman, that they are ducking their responsibility for what they did. Because I have no doubt in my mind that those are the responsible people that created the climate. And they supplied the money, Mr. Chairman, to do this. Eliminate the conflict. Dr. Khoersen also gave some insight into what motivated Besson to take on the so-called role of Dr. Death. And I asked him, why, Boter, are you doing this? And he said, I've got one daughter. And one day, and he said, we don't really have any doubt that the black people will take over the country. But one day, when the black people take over the country, and my daughter asked me, Daddy, what did you do to prevent this? My conscience would be clean. And I must admit, that was the psychosis which prevailed. And you can blame me for that. I had maybe my part in it. That is true. And I'm sorry about it. But I was not guilty alone. Frank Chukani was a political activist during the struggle and became involved in the ANC and the United Democratic Front in the 1980s. He later went on to be elected as the General Secretary of the SA Council of Churches. We went to meet Reverend Chukani, who told us about how in 1989, three policemen had laced his underwear with poison in an attempt to kill him. My body began to shake and shivering when it was so hot. And, and at one stage I asked the driver, stop, and uh, walked out and threw out. And from there I couldn't walk there to really carry me into the car. Shukani says he fell gravely ill three more times until blood tests revealed that he had been poisoned. We knew that there were laboratories in South Africa that were producing this stuff. There were three laboratories and Basson was directly involved. They produced those chemicals. Many people died mysteriously and nobody has talked about it. Nobody takes it seriously. But thanks God I'm alive, you know, to tell the story because not, there's nobody I know of who survived it like I did. Coming up next, a look at the Besson's criminal trial.
In the 1970s and 80s, the townships burnt and many lives were lost during the uprising. But many black and white South Africans had no idea until the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that secret plans were being made by the apartheid government to up their stakes of keeping power by developing poisons, toxins, drugs and new age tear gas to subdue the masses. In 1998, Dr. Votavasan fought hard against testifying at the TRC because he argued that it would prejudice his criminal trial, which the state was preparing for at the time. Chandra Gould was an investigator and evidence analyst for the TRC and has co-authored a book called Secrets and Lies about Basson and the Chemical and Biological Warfare Program. The court found against him and in favour of the TRC and the hearing went ahead, but the hearing then, we were only had 12 hours left during which the TRC was legally mandated to hold um, hearings of this nature. So there were 12 hours remained and most of that time was taken up with legal, legal argument, technical argument. The, Dr. Basson didn't even wish to put his military rank on record. So not terribly much emerged, certainly not much um, emerged from the testimony of Dr. Basson before the TRC. Yasmin Suka was one of the commissioners in the TRC. She is now the deputy chair of the Human Rights Violation Committee responsible for the hearings, documentation and the truth recovery part of the TRC. So in my view, he, he was not a truthful witness and neither was he somebody who was willing to come forward and talk about what he did. And even when there were revelations about what he actually got up to, it was just not a sense of remorse. I got the feeling when I walked away from the year, hearing that here you were dealing with somebody who was absolutely amoral, really. In 1999, a year after the TRC, Basson's criminal trial started in the Pretoria High Court. It had lost three years and ended up being the longest and most expensive trial in South African history. Basson faced charges of fraud, murder, attempted murder and possession of drugs. In, in the criminal trial, Basson was the only witness in his own defence. Um, there were more than 153 witnesses during the course of the trial, but Basson testified and he was the only witness in his defence. He denied involvement in any of the human rights violation related charges. Judge Vili Hartzenberg, who was accused of being grossly biased towards Basson, gave the state's case a major blow when he withdrew six of the eight conspiracy to murder charges because he said Basson couldn't be prosecuted in South Africa for crimes committed on foreign soil. These included crimes committed in Namibia during the border wars, like the poisoning of 200 Swapo prisoners of war. If you look at his trial, for instance, there's, um, one has very little doubt that we were talking about a judge who heard this case who, should, who had no business really sitting to hear the case because clearly he'd made up his mind even before the evidence was presented and the fact that Bota Basson was acquitted is astonishing. Basson walked away a free man from the highly controversial trial and went on to win an appeal by the state and a constitutional court application. That is fine, thanks. Are you quite happy with the proceedings? So far, yes, thank you. Are you having a better sleep tonight? I hope so. <laughs> But others do battle to sleep at night as they are still haunted by the loss of their loved ones nearly 30 years later. 80-year-old Maria Mtuli lives in Mamalodi, a stone's throw away from Pretoria, the old centre of apartheid rule. Her 17-year-old son Jeremiah was killed along with nine other boys in June 1986 when they were intent on joining the military arm of the ANC Mkonto Wesizwe and join the fight for freedom. To eliminate this threat, Flakplas hitman and double agent Joe Mamasela lured them to their deaths. He told them that he would take them across the border to Botswana for military training. Oh, on the way when they reached their destination, where the trap was set, is where they were all injected. After they injected them, they put them back in the cool. And then in the cool, there was uh, explosions in the cool. And the, there was one white man who said he was driving that kundi against the tree. And after making that tree, just jumped out and the kundi exploded. 
Maria and the other mothers learned these gruesome details nine years later at the TRC. The boys became known as the Nitfadin 10, meaning not deserved. How can they kill so small little children? Tell her they were 17 years, they are still young boys. They should have arrested them and asked them, where are you, your parents? And then called us and tell us what our children have done. No, they didn't do that. They just killed them without telling us what happened. Maria stands outside the gates of the high school Jeremiah attended, reminiscing about her son. The way he used to love and joke and sing, he, was, he, he used to sing, sing. The struggle songs. He, he, he used to tell me that he's going to be a lawyer. He wants to help people. Now Maria and the other mothers can only visit the graves of their fallen sons after waiting years for their discarded remains to be located and reburied close to home. I'm definitely sure if uh, person, because he's, he, that year, it was only person, person, injection, person, person, that and all that, you see. So um, we are definitely sure that that injection, it killed the boys, is from person. So why did the Health Professions Council find Basson guilty? Well, you'll get some answers after this. The grieving of people like Maria Ntuli is worsened by the fact that people like Basson, accused of human rights violations during apartheid, have carried on their lives without remorse or punishment. It's free, it's walking free, it's free. You must be punished. You must be punished. A guilty verdict by the Health Professions Council against Basson was something of a blessing for those who'd felt he'd literally gotten away with murder. In December 2013, seven years after the hearing began, the council found Basson guilty of unethical and unprofessional conduct as a medical practitioner. Medical doctors have a unique position in society, a sacred position, which impels them to stay true to the ethical values of the profession. This is equally true in conflict situations. The committee supports the notion that in South Africa, the medical ethics during war and peace are identical. The committee further decides that in the light of all the circumstances, the breaches of medical ethics amount to unprofessional conduct. My hat goes off to the, <coughs> you know, the Health, and Health Professionals Council because I think They've succeeded in um, ensuring that from a truth perspective and a justice perspective that this man has finally been held accountable. The charges Basson faced in the hearing were a far cry from what he had originally faced in his criminal trial, but were still important charges like coordinating the large-scale production of tear gas and drugs like Mandrax, Ecstasy and the incapacitant BZ, as well as supplying cyanide capsules for distribution to special units to use to commit suicide if captured. Medical law attorney Adele van der Volt says the hearing against Basson has been a complex one because of the amount of time that's passed, but she says that doctors are bound by very clear rules like the Geneva Convention and the Hippocratic Oath. The knowledge and skill that he used was that of a doctor and not of a normal soldier. The core of it is where knowledge of s and skill of a professional person is being used in such a way that it's not beneficial for a patient, whether it's directly or indirectly. In many of these matters, Dr. Basson has not had a direct patient-doctor relationship. However, with the knowledge and skill being a doctor, if su specific sub substances have been created, with the knowledge and skill knowing that the, di the indirect or direct cause of that can cause harm. It's in breach of the declaration as we've 
indicated earlier and in the Health Professionals Council of South Africa's ruling. At times, the hearing got heated as Basson denied all the charges. And nothing inhumane was done. Nobody was injured, nobody got hurt, nobody was incapacitated in any way at all. Everything was done with the, with the ultimate goal of saving lives and decreasing the loss of life and injury. And not as a medical practitioner for the 151st time, as a soldier. There's been no single evidence, not a single bit of proof before this committee that I've done any of those things. As a matter of fact, we're talking about possibilities of things that happen. There's not even a, a fact. There's not a single fact that that did happen. No names, places, nothing. I did not act contrary to the laws of humanity at any stage. Helmut Roma Heitman, a defense expert, says that for centuries doctors have helped develop all kinds of weapons. Whether you can reconcile developing weapons of any shape, size or form, or helping in the development of weapons of any size, shape, size or form, with a Hippocratic oath, is an interesting question. But every country that has chemical or biological weapons has had doctors help develop that. Basson's sentencing hearing was set to start in February 2014, but has been postponed. Some people say they hope that he'll be struck off the doctor's role. I think the thing that will hurt him the most is to be struck off the role of being able to practice as a doctor. I think that will be the most meaningful sanction. I mean, it won't be very much at this stage, but for him, he, he is an incredibly proud cardiologist, you know, and he... Um, and he says, you, this country can't afford to be without him, but actually there are things that you, you cannot get away with. The ruling doesn't sit well with Jan Wagenaar, who defended apartheid minister of law and order Adrian Flock and police commissioner Johan van der Merwe. He was criminally charged. He went through a lengthy hearing and he was acquitted on everything. Now he's charged for unethical conduct. For me... Where I'm coming from, it's very difficult because on all sides there were people, they may have been professionals in their own right, also on the side of the liberation movement. But when be being involved in an unconventional war like we had here, we all did things that can now, with hindsight, be criticized. If you read the report of the Truth Commission, you look back at the records of the trial, our vote of the sun. One question I have to ask is why was the Surgeon General, Lothar Mietlam, never prosecuted? Why was Kat Liebenberg never put before the courts? These are questions about people who hold key areas of responsibility. And so um, vote of the sun, yes, is being held accountable. But what of the people above him? And what about the people who allowed financing to be made available for this kind of thing? This is a first step, as I see it, in terms of the accountability process. And I do hope that it opens up a discussion for what we can do further. Because um, it, it, you know, a question I think we have to ask is, how is it possible that you can do this kind of thing? I'm saying, let's decriminalize the conflict of the past. Stop prosecuting people that we can move forward in this country, with, this, with, with our country. Because I say that is what this country needs. In relation to how long ago it happened, again, whether you acted unethically yesterday or 10 years ago is irrelevant to the fact of whether you acted ethically or unethically. I'm not even interested in taking him to court, call court and prove anything. I think he has to live with his conscience. You know, I mean, he's a human being. I hope he still has a conscience. Everything got its own end. This is the, the road end to Barcelona. If you miss one of your family, you will never forget. Especially the way they died this year, you won't forget. Now, what's your take on this issue? Well, you can comment via Twitter using the hashtag special assignment. You can also Facebook us on our fan page or you can email us.
Well, that's it for this evening. Thank you for watching and do join us again next week when we'll continue pointing out the issues that matter.